This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. So here's another report from the torch that I know we're going to have a little fun with Jimmy Hart was backstage at the May 19th pay-per-view. He sat on a meeting as part of TNA management with Bob Ryder and Tim Welch timeout. Who is Tim Welch? Timbo slice. Tim Welch is a weekly listener, but no, to go back in time, Tim, uh, is now a vice president in banking in Springfield, Illinois. So I know I'm jumping ahead, but, uh, He'll be out at opening day. So I, I work with him, uh, often now, but back in those days, um, he came down and started as an intern and worked his way up. Uh, what well, worked his way. I mean, he was, uh, my right-hand man. Uh, he, he assisted Bob Ryder. He assisted Jeremy Borash. He was kind of a, um, a point guy that, that he was everyone's assistant and did it very, very well. He was, you know, he, he wasn't per se, a wrestling guy, didn't want to put on boots and tights. You know, he, he'd had no, uh, desire to, to be, uh, in production or in ring. He wanted to learn the office work of wrestling from day one. So, uh, you can see where his career took him into banking smart man, but, uh, no, Tim, uh, was assistant to all in our lean and mean days. What was Jimmy Hart doing with the company officially? Nothing officially. Jimmy, uh, you know, goes back, uh, him and my father had a relationship, um, late seventies, early eighties. And you know, the, the Lawler, Jimmy Hart storyline is probably, I know you can put Bill Dundee in the conversation, but at the end of the day, the most lucrative storyline in, in Jarrett enterprises history is Lawler against Hart and his guys. And so that's how far back, uh, Jimmy goes with the family and, um, the, you know, the XWF didn't take off. And so Jimmy, we couldn't afford Jimmy full time and Hogan wasn't doing so much with anything with WWE. So we would bring Jimmy in from time to time up on Wednesdays. He was in, instrumental in the original, um, probably at this time, Conrad, uh, on this show, why was he up? Because, uh, he was the original conduit to universal studios because he had worked most recently, uh, with the team there. Let's, uh, let's keep the report going here. The meeting was held to formally present the wrestlers with new independent booking contracts that will enable the company to book the wrestlers on indie shows while collecting a 15% booking fee. The reaction of these contracts is mixed is mixed as wrestlers who had steady work on the indie scene are concerned that they will now lose money while others who couldn't find work are happy. They'll conceivably work more often. One concern is that wrestlers who turn down indie bookings arranged by the office will end up with heat with management. There was a case recently where one wrestler turned down a potential booking from the office. The wrestler later told friends that he was unhappy with the payoff he would have received and was not interested in traveling to the site of the indie show. He also said he felt pressured by the office to accept the booking, although he eventually talked his way out of it. So do you remember there being some backlash or pushback about, Hey guys, we're going to help y'all get some extra work, but we're taking a cut. It was such a difficult. Yes, I do remember backlash. And it was like, if we're going to put like man hours toward helping guys get booked because we were getting calls. Now at this time, again, we'd been on the air a year, year and a half, two years coming up. And, and so we got a lot of calls. Hey, is AJ styles or team Canada, are they available? And so we, we knew that work was beginning to be cultivated off of the Wednesday night exposure. Not that everybody was watching on Wednesday night, but just the fact that, Hey, he, he's the X division champion. He's in the X division or whatever it may be. So it just, we, we began to get all those calls. And so how do we sort of navigate this? I was obviously saw both sides of that, that it's just so damn hard that, uh, this talent we're offering them one day a week. <clears throat> and now if we get you a book and we're going to take a little cut of that, it was challenging. Uh, yes, there were bow back, but for the most part, Bob, uh, and look, Jimmy could talk from authority, especially coming from the music business. There's always a booking fee. It's commonplace in music or acting or anything like that. An agent gets a little bit. So we were serving as their booking agent but kind of a new concept in wrestling in those days. 
Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.